everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is another compare and contrast between a modern G.I. Joe action figure and its vintage equivalent. These are usually kind of fun, and since we've been talking about Tripwire a lot lately, let's go ahead and compare a modern G.I. Joe Tripwire action figure with the first version of Tripwire. This modern G.I. Joe action figure is Tripwire version 5 from 2008. It was in a comic book 2 pack packaged with a modern version of the hooded Cobra Commander. He is standing next to Tripwire version 1 from 1983. He was G.I. Joe's mind detector. At first glance you can see they were trying to translate that vintage figure into modern form. We've got basically the same colors, uh, basically the same accessories, and basically the same details. But of course the modern figure is taller. It's in a slightly different scale. Uh, the modern figures averaged 4 inches tall rather than the vintage three and three quarter inches and of course they had updated sculpting and articulation let's take a look at these accessories because i gotta make a comment about them uh, the accessories are basically the same you have the minesweeper you have the backpack and you have three mines but uh, this minesweeper the modern version um, has this bend it doesn't stay in the figure's hand very well for one thing the vintage one didn't either which I, I guess that's no loss there the modern version isn't necessarily worse than the vintage version uh, but this cord is kind of short and it actually makes it quite difficult uh, to connect the cord to the backpack and to get it in the figure's hand. Um, so I guess that's not necessarily worse than the vintage figure, but this is a modern update and I would hope to have um, a bit of an upgrade rather than have the same problems you had on the vintage figure. Also, this plastic is a bit flexible. It has a bit of bend in it, uh, so that's why it kind of has a curve here. Uh, you can flex this plastic a bit without breaking it, and that is one good thing about modern figures. Uh, the plastic does tend to be a little bit more flexible than the vintage figures, but you can end up uh, with a bend in your accessory that looks a little bit odd on the figure. Looking at the modern accessory next to the vintage accessory, let's go ahead and pull that out, and as you can see, it dropped right out of his hand, uh, so that was a problem on the vintage figure as well. And it is almost the same accessory uh, in black instead of dark gray. Uh, we still have the wire that connects to the backpack. Uh, we do have a bit of an additional detail with this kind of readout screen here on the side. Otherwise, it is basically the same as the vintage figure, just some minor updates and differences. Uh, otherwise, obviously, they were trying to translate the vintage uh, accessory into modern form. Now let's take a look at the backpack, and the backpack, again, is basically the same. A very slightly different shade of green, and of course, uh, they're not interchangeable. The modern backpack um, has a smaller peg for a smaller hole in the back. Uh, the vintage backpack had the classic standard peg that was a bit lower down and a bit bigger, so you can't interchange these. Um, they don't, you can't switch them around. But you can see they did use basically the same mold for the modern version as vintage with some very minor updates. Otherwise, this is the same accessory. On the vintage accessory, you had three mines that were stored in the backpack and they were removable. And that is the same on the modern accessory. You can pull all three mines out of the backpack. Uh, these mines are very close to the vintage mines. Uh, in fact, the main difference would be the color. Um, the size, they look really close to the same size. Uh, the details also very close to the same. But you can see the modern mines are in a slightly different shade of green. Uh, they're different on the back too. You can see they changed the back. Uh, but otherwise, again, basically the same accessory. Out of curiosity, I decided to see if you could fit the modern mine into the vintage backpack. And no, it does not really fit. It is just a little bit too big. So there is a slight size different between vintage and modern, and the modern mine will not fit in the vintage backpack. Let's go ahead and look at the figure itself, starting with the first version of Tripwire. Here you have a figure that in 1983 was made of entirely original parts, um, and you have basically a green figure with a non-removable helmet, black goggles, you have a little bit of a red tampo here on the right arm. Uh, then basically he's just different shades of gray, uh, gray padding, uh, lighter gray gloves, 
gloves and boots, but uh, fairly plain figure. Uh, appropriate, I guess, for uh, a minesweeper, uh, but not a very exciting figure. With modern figures, though, that gives them the opportunity to update the detailing and really uh, bring out some additional details that were not present on the original vintage figure. And obviously, they are trying to copy the same basic style. You have uh, a mostly green figure, a non-removable helmet with black goggles, and you have some gray padding and gray gloves and boots. Uh, so really, basically, an update of the vintage figure. But I've got a little bit of a problem with this. The vintage figure was made of all unique parts. On that vintage figure, you have kind of plain gray padding. Um, not a lot of detail there. On the modern figure, you can see there is a bit of a texture pattern on that padding, and he has some additional padding on his arms. Well, you may view this as an attempt to add some additional detail to the plain vintage figure, but that's not really what happened here. What actually happened is they reused the body from Sergeant Flash. They just changed the colors for Tripwire, and they gave him a new head and new boots. Other than that, it's the same figure. Now you can see why there's this texture pattern on the Tripwire figure, and why he has these additional pads on his arms and his legs. Those are not details from Tripwire. Those are details from the vintage Flash and Grand Slam figures. For the modern Flash figure, they updated those details for the modern figure. But what they've done here is they have created a modern tripwire action figure on the cheap. They gave him a new head, which is a good looking head. I really don't have a problem with the head. They gave him some new boots, but otherwise they just reused Flash. I'm a collector of vintage G.I. Joe action figures. I am not a modern collector, although I have looked at some modern figures. I'm somewhat reserved about my opinions on modern figures because I do not want to foment any rivalry between collectors of modern G.I. Joe and collectors of vintage G.I. Joe, it's really just not worth it. I have tried to point out the virtues of modern G.I. Joe figures, even though, again, I'm not a collector. I've tried to minimize some of the problems I have with modern G.I. Joe figures, but the Tripwire figure is going to force me to talk about some of my problems with modern G.I. Joe toys. The reuse of parts in the vintage era was a problem, and I have tried to point that out. The reuse of parts of the modern era, though, is rampant and gratuitous, and I think less excusable than in the vintage era. These modern figures, in my opinion, are not created or marketed as toys for children to play with. They are marketed more toward adult collectors, uh, collectors who are nostalgic for the vintage figures. They are modern updates and translations of the vintage figures, and their articulation, their sculpting, their accessories reflect the fact that they are really intended toward adults who were fans of G.I. Joe back in the 80s and 90s. If I were a collector of modern G.I. Joe figures, I would have a problem with paying full price for these cheapy figures that very little work went into. And this problem continues to more premium action figures like figure subscription service figures and convention exclusives. The vintage figure had that vintage articulation, which was pretty basic, but adequate for a kid to play with. The modern figures have a lot more articulation uh, at uh, the arms and the legs and the wrists and the ankles and all that. So we have much more updated articulation. And uh, for posing, that's pretty good. I mean, a modern collector can pose these figures in lots of different ways. Um, they also came with figure stands that had their name on them. Uh, the vintage figures did not have that. Uh, but I have a few other problems with the articulation and sculpting on these modern figures. A problem I've always had with modern figures is this cut right here across the chest. That is a point of articulation, uh, and sure, that's good articulation, but it breaks up any details on the chest. Um, details like this pad here uh, on the vintage tripwire figure, you do get the full sculpt without any cuts on the chest. Instead, you have a cut right here on the waist, at the belt level, which to me makes a lot more sense. Uh, and on a figure like Flash here, uh, that's supposed to have a solid detail right here on his chest, to have that cut there, uh, where it bends and moves uh, while the solid piece is broken up, 
Uh, that is very distracting to me, and that's kind of a problem I have with all modern figures. That articulation point is less of a problem on figures that do not have a detail that's supposed to go over the entire chest, or figures that have vests that cover that detail. But for figures like Tripwire, like Flash, or like Bazooka, who has a big number printed on his chest, that articulation point is very distracting, and in my opinion, makes the modern figures look less attractive attractive than their vintage equivalents. Collectors of modern era G.I. Joe toys apparently don't have a problem with this, or they may even prefer it, and if they do, that is fine. They should stick with what they like. And the vintage era figures had plenty of flaws on their own. However, in my opinion, the flaws on the vintage era figures were acceptable for toys that were created and marketed to be played with by children. Also, since, in my opinion, the modern figures are created and marketed to appeal to the nostalgia of older G.I. Joe fans, I do not get the same nostalgia bug from the modern figures as from the vintage. With the vintage figure, I don't just get a representation of the classic toy, I get the toy itself. I don't get an updated copy of the thing that was actually played with by kids at the time, I get the actual thing. With the vintage figure, I'm not getting something that was made to appeal to nostalgia, I'm getting the thing that created the nostalgia in the first place. The modern figures, for all their virtues, which I have extolled in prior videos, simply cannot do what the vintage figures do. There you go, now that I've pissed off a lot of modern G.I. Joe collectors, I would like to remind everyone that if you choose to collect, you should collect what you like, and you do not have to justify it to anyone, and you should not let a guy on the internet change your mind. I'd also like to point out that in several videos I I have talked about the virtues of modern figures, I've said they look very nice, they have excellent articulation, and all of that is true, I stand by it. So you'll have to excuse me if I take one video to point out where I think modern figures fall short, and why I will always be a vintage toy collector. Also I have to say, if you are a fan of modern G.I. Joe figures, and you would like me to review the modern figures, keep in mind I would have to point out a lot more of these flaws than you would probably like. That was a quick compare and contrast between the modern tripwire action figure and the vintage equivalent. I hope you enjoyed it, or I hope you at least didn't hate it too much. This video is in lieu of a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review this weekend. I will be returning next week with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review, so I hope you will tune in for that. If you are new to the channel, we do detailed reviews of vintage G.I. Joe toys, so I hope you will subscribe so you can see more. Thank you to all my subscribers all my supporters and all my patrons and everyone who makes this show possible. I will see you next weekend with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review and until then remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.